Good afternoon, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper, and I'm here today with Timur Meister, the co-founder and chief product officer for with Career Karma. Good afternoon, Timur. Yeah, hey Mark, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to share a little bit about us and uh, learn more about you and your community. Well, thanks, we're, we're excited to hear about it. So why don't we start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Yeah, so like, um, Mark said, I'm the co-founder and uh, chief product officer at Career Karma. Um, I'm based out of, in San Francisco, but um, when I, um, but my story didn't start out um, like wanting to be in San Francisco. I'm originally from Ukraine and my parents came to the United States um, when I was in middle school because they just wanted to have a better life for us. Um, eventually I ended up developing a passion for tech and um, I always wanted to learn how to code, uh, but uh, it was too late for me when I had that realization in college. And so um, long story short, I ended up um, quitting my job back in 2013, leaving Atlanta to move out to San Francisco to do a coding bootcamp. And that really started my journey because then um, from that, I ended up getting a high paying job as a software developer um, at Blipper, which is a augmented reality startup in San Francisco. and um, that was a life-changing moment because my salary increased, my experience also increased building apps. And eventually that led me to start Career Karma with my co-founders. And uh, in short, Career Karma provides people with advice on how to get into high paying jobs in tech, uh, usually in less than 12 months. And we're a community and it's completely free and it's pretty much for everyone who wants to learn how tech works and get a job there. Oh, very cool. And, and I assuming back in 2013, you learned React and JavaScript and Node and all those things? So funny enough, um, back in 2013, uh, I was learning uh, Ruby on Rails. Hmm. That was very popular. And um, when I did my coding bootcamp, uh, they were teaching Backbone, which was one of the hmm. front end frameworks. Um, and when I got hired for my first job at Blipper, we were building an augmented reality editor on the web. And so that's when we started to use React. Um, we didn't, uh, we were thinking about Angular, but React was blowing up and was so popular. Mm -hmm. So we stuck with React and uh, we used Node. So my experience at uh, App Academy, which was the coding bootcamp I attended, kind of flipped because there I was learning a lot of Backbone and Ruby on Rails. And mm -hmm. then in my first job, um, it was mostly React and, um, and Node. Yeah, very cool. So what has been your experience with remote employment, both as an employee and an employer? That's a good question, Mark. Um, so uh, back when I first got my job as a developer, uh, I had to come in and work out of my office. And then um, after I quit my job and started Career Karma, uh, from the very beginning, we designed our whole company to be remote. And so we have people who are in Puerto Rico, Ukraine, Philippines, UK, um, all over the world. And um, it's definitely been a challenge creating that culture and creating uh, um, that cohesiveness uh, within a team. But we get so many benefits from having a remote team that I would say it's worth it. And even though I'm based in Silicon Valley, I think there's a lot of companies that are looking to start a company, especially today in 2020, to consider at least having a remote team because there's a lot of benefits that come with that. Hmm. And is it just you and your partner in San Francisco or is it? Yeah. So <laughs> my, my co-founders and I were based out of San Francisco. Um, we, we do have one uh, employee who does our product in San Francisco, but the rest of the team is fully remote. Our team is now at over 50 people and hmm. we're, they're just fully distributed, um, different time zones, which could be a challenge sometimes, but um, we're just fortunate that with Slack, tools like Zoom, uh, Jira, like you name it, um, you actually can get a lot of work done. And I think it just comes down to hiring team that takes um, ownership of their work. Mm -hmm. And if you hire the right people, um, they will get the work done, whether they're working remotely or they're coming in into the office. Well, since you have a lot of uh, experience with remote employment, um, what do you think is the future of remote employment? And what, especially what do you think can be done to make it more effective? Yeah. That's, that's also a good question. Um, I think in terms of the future, um, more and more companies are gonna be um, going remote. 
as you know, with COVID and companies like Twitter and Square, a number of others saying that they'll go remote indefinitely, uh, on one hand, it gives uh, the employees more work-life balance. So instead of just spending an hour or two commuting to work, stuck in traffic, you actually can spend more time with your kids. And I think long-term, it's gonna be a competitive advantage for companies that wanna hire top employees. It will almost come as a, as a standard perk offered by top companies. Um, and in terms of where I think is the future, I think we're gonna see a lot more tools um, to pretty much replace a lot of the banter that you might have in an office um, virtually. Uh, we're going to see a lot more software that's developed for remote teams to make the communication and the delivery of your projects more manageable. You know, that's one of the big downsides of having a remote team is it's sometimes it becomes a nightmare keeping track of everything that's going on. But uh, I think with the next couple of years, I'm sure there's some kid in um, their parents' garage working on mm -hmm. the next year, uh, right for remote teams. And as you probably know, I mean, I've, I've had teams in different countries. You almost have different cultures within your company when you have yeah. the, the multiple offices, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yep. So what is the story? Well, yeah. What is the, which teams do you have? Just a little bit about your uh, story. Uh, you mentioned you guys have developers in uh, Ukraine and some other places. Uh, well, we, we have developers from all over the world. And, I mean, not literally all over the world, but we, we really take the top 1%. Um, Ukraine is one of the areas that whole um, Eastern Europe block a lot of good talents coming out of there there's obviously a lot of good developers in India and China and all mm -hmm. in you know, Southeast Asia too um, and different parts of Europe even there's we're, you're starting to see some out of Africa too so that's mm -hmm. starting to pick up so yeah, yeah. I mean I, I think there's a lot of talent um, we with career karma we like to hold on like hidden geniuses mm -hmm. um, there's hidden geniuses in India, Africa, Ukraine, Brazil, and um, previously, up until about 10, 20, like 10 years ago, uh, that talent was locked up because they didn't have proper equipment, they didn't have access to the internet. Now that um, your computer almost becomes like a ut basic utility that the same way how people have water, everyone's starting to have computer and access to this information on, the, on Google and on the internet, you basically see people like teaching themselves JavaScript, React, you see people learning English so they can read the documentation, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's becoming more accessible and that's what Career Karma is excited about because our goal is to help people find um, jobs and help them get into those jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the employers that we work with, they are starting to put less and less emphasis on credentials and degrees and more about what you can actually do. And they put your portfolio as the main thing that they look at when they're interviewing you. Hmm. So it's also interesting to see those trends in the, in the space as well. And I'm sure it's going to continue accelerating um, in the years to come. Yeah, I think it was starting to, I, I, it was on the start of the up, upward trend. And I think COVID just, yeah, I think it pushed it forward five years. You know, yeah, I think, I think probably even more than that, honestly, because if you think about online education, right, mm -hmm. now colleges that have been around for 100 years, now they have to completely revamp how they, um, how they accept students, how they have like campus visits, how they facilitate instruction online. And that's going to translate a lot into the industry too, because as you start getting used to um, learning online, you're going to start also getting used to working remotely instead of um, in person. Yeah. So you, you've talked a little bit about career karma, but why don't you tell us now, you know, what, what it is that career karma really does, um, who you serve, all those things. Yeah. So career karma, in, in a nutshell, we help people uh, get into jobs and people who come to us, um, they come from various non-traditional backgrounds. So as examples, some examples are we have a lot of veterans who leave the military, they're adults as well. They're not just 18 year old kids who are picking uh, colleges to attend. Uh, they come to us and they tell us, listen, I have a lot of experience um, managing my team. Now that I'm part of the civilian world, 
how do I get a high paying job? And so at the very core, what Career Karma does is we show them pathways. And for some people that might be really good at tech sales, right? Mm-hmm. Some people might be good at programming because they like solving problems. Some people might be better at data analysis or design, right? Traditionally, people always have thought that you need to have a degree, like a four year degree for you to even apply for these jobs. With Career Karma, what, what we do at the very core is um, we basically connect people who are starting out with people who are a few steps ahead of them mm-hmm. who might be already attending a coding boot camp or you might be doing a free course on free code camp. And we basically create a community of other learners at different stages. And so uh, at the very core, our community does ride on karma because when you joined and you knew nothing about tech careers, someone helped you. Once you're mm. graduating from a coding boot camp or you are already got your first job, you kind of have this uh, desire to have an impact on other people because your life has changed so much. And so at the very core, that's what we do. We provide people with career advice, helping them figure out pathways and actually get into jobs in 12 months or less. Wow, that's really cool. It's interesting because you're right. When I started out in college, my brother, once I graduated, he helped me get my first job. Yeah. And then, you know, from there, I helped some friends. It's, it, it's the way it works. Yeah. Right. It's like kind of get kind of getting around that old, that, you know, like I'm from Stanford and I only hire Stanford people. Well, there's a lot of other really talented people out there. Yeah. And, and at the very, I think the big trend that we're riding right now is um, the whole education space is starting to unbundle. And so um, if you're someone, if you're a startup that wants to hire engineers to know React and JavaScript, right? Mm-hmm. And know, um, that's a specific skill set that someone who will graduate from a four year degree might not even have, right? right. They might know a lot about uh, like, microprocessors and all the different like levels of like operating systems. But what it comes down to is if a company wants to find someone who can build web apps, um, the Mm -hmm. open source frameworks have actually evolved so much that as an engineer, like out of a coding bootcamp, Mm -hmm. you know, JavaScript and you know how to use react and you've Mm -hmm. actually built like five projects using those technologies. Yeah, it's going to be very easy for you to join another team that's using React or React Native right. and build their apps, right? And yeah. you can do that a lot quicker. The, the pay is a lot higher, and um, and the the employer is specifically looking for people who have that skill versus like where you went to school, like what fraternity you were in, like what sports mm-hmm. you played. It's very like, kind of black and white. Do you know? Do you have the skills? If you do, we'll get we'll give you a job. Yeah, very And it's interesting you mentioned the military background. I'm, I'm doing some consulting for a pre-funding startup that um, we actually um, hired at a, at a very reasonable rate, a military person. And he, he's been phenomenal, right? And he's like, I think he's 25 or 26, but as soon as they get funded, he's going to be the first employee. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. I agree. They, they have a, ver- a great work in. Yeah, it's it, honestly, I mean, it's, it's everyone. Like we have in our community, we have parents mm-hmm. and we love how we have a group on a career comic called Moms Who Code. Mm-hmm. And um, when, w- what happens is that career comma doesn't actually teach you how to code. What we do is we connect you to other people who will share the best tutorials, the best advice that helps you actually get into a job. Because mm-hmm. the biggest misconception for people is that if you, when I get a job, just learn how to code, but there's a lot more to it, right? It's for you to learn how to code, you need to find the time. You have mm-hmm. to find discipline, you have to find a routine. And those are things that you won't learn just from a Udemy course. You will learn from other people right. who are in the same uh, place as you. And when it comes to the job search, uh, most like your technical, technical skills only make up about 50% of what your employer is looking for. Your communication skills, your ability to talk about your projects, your mm-hmm. ability to um, actually d- like actually talk about the approach of how you solve problems, right? That's mm-hmm. what the employer is looking for. A typical person who just learns on their own, they think the employer cares about the answer, whether it's right or not. Just They want to just give you the right answer. In reality, the employer is evaluating you on five or six different things 
communication and your like thoughts being one of the primary ones. And so um, that's what career karma does. We just explain people in today's world, what does it take for you to get hired in tech? Hmm, very interesting. So um, the current situation, um, as we all know, the, the pandemic forced everybody to go remote um, on March 16th. You really were remote already. You'd already set it all up. But did that cause any roadblocks or challenges that you didn't expect? So that's a good question too. Um, I think the I think honestly with the COVID, our team um, didn't run into a lot of challenges. However, um, we had to um, make sure that our team, because our team is in Ukraine and Philippines and regionally, like the number of COVID cases spikes. Um, it doesn't all spike at the same time. So just being very well aware of our team's morale and teams. Um, I guess like the team's stress levels because mm -hmm. someone might be coming to work every day and you don't see them every day because you might speak to them on Slack or Zoom, but in their own life, there might be concern about losing their jobs because there's a lot of startups that did layoffs. Mm -hmm. They might be concerned about um, getting COVID, right? And they just, they show up to work and they can't think about anything else. And so one of the things we had to do was make sure that we communicate with our employees. We check in on them and make sure that they're doing good. Because in the long run, during times like these, this is when you get to build your culture, right? Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't build your culture when everything is going well, you build your culture when things aren't going well and you're trying to make sure that you look out for people who are closest to you. Because then when everything bounces back, those are gonna be the me memories and experiences that they're gonna remember you for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So. Finally, there, there are companies like Gaper, and, and you're actually similar, that, that help develop, build, and scale products, uh, especially for startups. How important do you think this will be going forward? Um, you know, for companies, these startups that need to hire talent, and they need to hire it in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I think I would just encourage uh, startups to get creative. Uh, I think Gaper uh, sounds like a company that could at least point them in the right direction of expanding options. At the end of the day, um, as a founder and like as someone who has done a ton of hiring, um, I want to be able to evaluate a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. Some leads might come from people in your circle. Some come from LinkedIn. Some might come from AngelList. But if there is um, other sources that have talent, uh, I don't see the downside. And there's only upside in, in terms of having options because those options will give you the most leverage. Yes, I, I agree. Well, Timur, I want to thank you for your time today. I know it's, it's late there, it's pushing up on five o'clock. Uh, so I want to thank you for your time and wish you a great night. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, have, a great, have a great night as well. And I hope uh, your listeners are staying safe. And if every, anyone wants to reach out to me, you can just email me at timur at careerkarma.com. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark.